Welcome to November and welcome back to Weather 4. Weather Geeks, it's the most in-depth weather forecast video you're going to find for our entire region. We focus on the Mahoning and Shenango Valleys in Northeast Ohio and Western PA in these videos, but we oftentimes, of course, branch out and take a look at region-wide weather happenings and even nationwide weather happenings. And locally, yeah, of course, the snow was the story last night and into this morning. Now, when it comes to conditions at the start of the day today, it was pretty variable. Unfortunately, we had a fatal accident along I-80 in Mercer County, but we had hardly any snow, uh, kind of shadowing the Mahoning River Valley from oh, Warren down through downtown Youngstown over towards Newcastle. That was where snow amounts were at their lowest. Um, we had generally an inch or two and kind of a wide swath surrounding that, but even as much as five inches up near Greenville in northwestern Mercer County. And actually, there was one spot that really stood out just outside of our viewing area. This was kind of near the intersection of uh, Crawford, Venango, and Mercer counties, a little town called Hannahsville reported 10 inches worth of snow. There was kind of a nearly stationary band of lake effect that uh, kind of was diving towards southeastern Crawford County for a time last night that really cranked up the amounts over there. But uh, otherwise, yeah, th things went pretty much according to plan with, you know, again, a coating in some spots and up to a couple of inches, places like Gustavus. Um, there was a couple of inches pretty common down towards Salem, even down towards Lisbon and East Liverpool. There was a you know half an inch to an inch worth of snow in some spots. I had a little fun with statistics today. Uh, you know, one of the maybe somewhat common perceptions about Halloween snow is it's a it's a sign that we're gonna have a bad winter, right? Well, there's actually not much data you know, when it comes to Halloween snow. It's only happened a handful of times. Prior to last evening's snowflakes, we've only had four instances of snow on record going back to 1930 on, uh, on Halloween. Uh, 2019, the most recent year. Uh, of course, everybody around here, uh, if you're a longtime resident, remembers 1993. This is the 30 year anniversary of that one. We had a trace of snow in 1963 and about two inches in 1954. Well, what happened uh, those following winters? 2019, 2020 was a warm winter with below average snow, but it was cold, 93, 94, cold, 63, 64, cold, 54, 55. Each of those years did feature above average snowfall as well. Now, I don't think there's a big correlation here. It's a small sample size, but hey, just a little bit of fun with statistics because it's always fun to look at, you know, past weather records and see if you can find anything cool. Uh, when we look at, historically speaking, when our snowfall happens in our area, uh, as we go into the month of November, it ticks up certainly. Only about 1% of our annual fall snowfall falls in uh, October. It's about 6.5% in November. A much bigger jump, though, of course, as we head into meteorological winter, December. January and February. February would kind of be similar to January if it had a few more days. Of course, February is the shortest month. All right, nothing like that uh, coming back anytime real soon. The last of the uh, snowflakes and uh, sprinkles have faded away. The sky is clearing this evening. And boy, do we have a recipe for a cold night tonight. Uh, these scattered clouds continue to kind of fizzle, and that process will continue tonight. Whenever you hear us talking about Radiational cooling, here's what we mean. Uh, solar radiation during the day, even when it's fairly cloudy, we get incoming solar radiation. It heats the ground, the ground heats the air. Well, once we lose the daylight hours, that heat tries to escape back to space. If we have a deck of clouds overhead, it acts as kind of a blanket, blocking partially at least that escaping heat. When we have a clear sky overhead and the wind is calm especially, that's a recipe for all that heat escaping very efficiently and temperatures can get a lot colder. Um, if you have still a little bit of snow on the ground in your location, if you picked up three or four inches of snow last night, no doubt you probably have at least some spotty patches of snow still on the ground. It can get even colder when you have clear skies, light winds, and snow cover to kind of refrigerate the lower levels of the uh, of the atmosphere. So going county by county, yeah, this is gonna be our coldest night of the season, coldest start to the day that we've had so far uh, this season with Mahoning County, widespread middle 20s, same thing in Trumbull County, Mercer County, you know, especially if there's a little bit of snow still on the ground, you might see 21, 22, 23 in some spots first thing tomorrow morning. And there's always a lot of variation down in Columbiana County because of the uh, topography down here. Once you get south of Lisbon, especially, you get into hilly terrain, you get some sheltered valleys and down here, 21, 22 is going to be possible, especially in those sheltered valleys tomorrow morning. But as a region-wide average, 24, 25, 26 as our Thursday gets underway. We'll call it mostly sunny early and partly sunny as we go into the afternoon on Thursday. And then a clearing sky for a time Thursday night into Friday morning. 
It'll turn out to be a fairly cloudy second half of the day Friday, and that will be the case Friday night and Saturday as well. But this front, very moisture starved, and it's going to kind of fizzle as well. So while we're going to have kind of a band of cloudiness for a time, Friday night, Saturday, I don't think we see any precipitation. It'll just be kind of a ho-hum look to things. If you still have a lot of yard work to do like I do, a lot of leaves to take care of, and of course this week's rain and snow and inclement weather has uh, kind of postponed a lot of people's outdoor uh, chores, you're going to be in pretty good shape by Friday and into Saturday as well. All right, week two of high school football playoff action Friday evening. It won't be as warm as last Friday, but it will be dry. Uh, mostly cloudy sky. Temperatures in the upper 40s to around 50 at kickoff. Middle 40s by the end of our games. I told you last evening we would uh, check out the November forecast this evening. Here's a look at uh, that November outlook from the Climate Prediction Center showing increased odds of above average temperatures for the month as a whole out west. About equal chances here locally and a cooler than average month somewhat favored in New England. I don't have many quarrels with this forecast. They might be a little overdone with the heat out here in the west. Um, I think that actually we have a better chance of it being cooler than average a little bit farther to the west than they have. I'm not going to be surprised if November in our area comes out in the washes pretty close to average, maybe closer than October. October finished about three degrees warmer than average. I don't think we'll uh, follow suit in the month of November. Some chilly shots, no doubt. The uh, precipitation outlook uh, showing increased odds of below average precipitation here locally. I may not be as confident as they are that this is the ultimate outcome. I do think that uh, the subtropical jet will start to become a little more active as El Nino starts to uh, really take hold of the steering currents across uh, North America as we head deeper into the month. So while the month may end up being a little bit below average in terms of precipitation, I'm not real confident of that at this point, and I don't think it's likely to be some sort of big margin. I do think that El Nino is more and more going to start taking the steering wheel a little bit as we go deeper into November and closer to the start of meteorological winter. We're going to talk all about El Nino and everything else that's going on in the atmosphere and the oceans as we talk about our annual winter forecast in the coming days with the release of that forecast coming up eight days from now on 21 News 5, 6, and 11 and right here online by mid-evening next Thursday, November the 9th. Hope to see you then. Hope to see you tomorrow for Thursday evening's edition of Weather for Weather Geeks.